Gentlemen, if you've not heard this before, it is my firm belief that men should lead. But a lot of times today, there is nobody out there teaching you what exactly leading looks like or how you actually do it. So today, I am going to talk about it. Hey, gentlemen, like I said, it is very important that men lead. That is our role here on earth, and it frankly is what God has ordained for all of us to do, to lead in our family, lead in the community, and just lead. Gentlemen, leading is a process. You have to learn it. It is not something you're born with, and it's not something that's going to just magically come in your head. So here's something that'll help you on your journey to learning to lead. Also, stick around for my last tip because I truly believe it is a thing that puts it all together and you can't lead unless you do it. So gentlemen, let's start with this first tip and it is to lead yourself. Leading yourself means you have to develop yourself into the man you wanna become. So first, that is getting stronger. That is getting stronger physically, which is actually the easier part. You just go to the gym, you find an exercise routine, you stop eating so much junk, stop drinking too much, and you'll end up getting your body stronger. The harder thing to do is to make yourself mentally strong, building resiliency. And that comes from overcoming obstacles and actually working on stick to itiveness Hard thing to do, but it's very important to leading yourself. The next time you build this mental strength, make sure you don't forget your emotional strength. And that's really dealing with whatever issues you're coming into life with. And for a lot of us, if you're like me, you came from a household without a father, believe me, that actually has some effects on you. Or if you had a father in the household and he was abusive or you had an abusive mother, those mental issues actually go along with you for the rest of your life and really find someone to talk to about it. That could be a professional counselor, that could be a good friend, but those are actual emotional issues that you need to work through and that's gonna hinder you from leading yourself. And the proof of you leading yourself is to actually fulfill your commitments. That's if you go out and tell somebody you're gonna do something, you actually do it. That's showing that you are in control of your life and you're holding yourself accountable, which is what leading yourself is. So the first one was talking about what you need to do with yourself, but this next one is really comes to relationships. And that is set limits and expectations. And, you, and that's really important in any kind of relationship specifically, but I'm talking about a, a long-term boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, and especially a marriage. You need to set the limits on what you will and won't do, and set the expectations for the woman about what your roles are, to be the provider, the defender, and how you expect to work, or if you wanna go 50-50, set that expectation. And then set your expectation for her role. Hey, I expect a woman to cook and clean and raise the children and develop my children to actually fulfill my long-term legacy but I'll be the one who will still have the overarching responsibility to, to overrule some of the things I disagree with, or it's 100% 50-50 and we have 100% say, and I, I, I guess you flip a coin, I guess, to figure out disagreements. I don't know. But whatever those are, you need to actually set those expectations for how the relationship is gonna work. And then you need to do other things that are also important usually to relationships, such as, set the expectations and limits for religion and how much you're going to go to church and, and how important religion is going to be in your life. And then the most important thing for you to do, the number one reason why relationships and especially marriages fail, you need to get a clear goal and set clear expectations on finances, what debt looks like, how you're going to live, what your budget's going to be. And that needs to be something that you do up front all right, man, so for the next thing for you to do to actually lead in a relationship is you need to understand women in general and your wife specifically. And so I start off by saying you need to understand women because there's just certain things that are true about all women. Women need to respect you before they'll feel comfortable, before they'll actually accept your leadership. Women expect certain things from men such as a a certain level of unemotionalness and rationalness. They expect you to lead and they expect a leader to actually look a certain way, earn a certain amount of money, have a certain amount of ambition. And those are things that are all important for women in general. Take it a step further and actually understand your woman. 
or definitely your wife. You need to understand her. You need to know her background and how her background affected her and what her expectations are. And you need to understand her and that's gonna let you lead into the next thing of you need to be able to meet her needs. And what I mean by meeting her needs, you need to meet her real, not her imagined needs. There's a physical component. Yeah, I mean a physical component of meeting her needs. But even past that, there's an emotional component. And this emotional component is, like I said, is being that rock, understanding her, listening to her, and giving her what she needs back emotionally. Sometimes it's solving problems. I think a lot of times it's solving problems. And I think that um, when we try and understand what women want, sometimes it's a lot of listening and we listen way too much when we actually need to solve some problems. But some problems aren't able to be solved by actually going out, turning a wrench or punching a dude in the face, um, which I, I don't condone doing. But you also have to actually understand sometimes it's just listening. And then you have to understand what her mental needs are. And that takes a bunch of different forms. Sometimes I stimulate her mentally by flirting and setting some sort of mystery up with her. Other times it's an intellectual stimulation with kind of actually challenging her mentally and getting her to expand her mind, see new experiences and having fun and being spontaneous. But you need to understand what these needs are for your woman and actually meet them. And the last thing is really what I think is the one that carries them all together and really what lead, leading is for men. It is you need to set a vision for the future and carry everyone along with it. You need to have your goals and a mission for your life and your wife and your children are coming along with you. Your wife is helping you do it as much as she can, but it's still your vision and your direction. You're taking your relationship, your wife and your family. This takes a bunch of different form, man. You need to have your actual goals for life. They need to come from out of your head. Maybe they start off on the back of a napkin, but then it needs to get to someplace real and solid that you're actually focused on it every day. For me, it takes this form. My goal book, which I write in every day, I write my goals down, I write my accomplishments toward them, and I keep a log of it. And my wife is helping me where she can help, and she's coming along for the ride for the most of it. So gentlemen, those were some quick tips on how to actually lead your family and what leading looks like. I wholeheartedly believe that there needs to be more sources out there that teach men how to develop the skills that women need us to have, and leading is one of them. In fact, that's kind of the point of this channel. So if you found out this was helpful, please like it. And if you haven't watched it, check out this video, which like I said, is what this channel is trying to accomplish. And I'll see you next time.